And you will find our scripture coming from the book of Acts, chapter 17, beginning at verse 30. When you have it, say amen.
what we would ask in the body of belief is more stuff, but we want to look at judgment or eternal judgment. And, and this is significant. Because guess what? Everybody in here has an expiration date. Some of y'all have a medical treatment by day too. And they're not necessarily the same dates. Because sometimes stuff, it expires. And it's still just hanging around. Y'all have some stuff in your pantry that's probably two or three years old. And you ain't get rid of it either. Minister Smalls, I'll, I'll make you do that. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but all of us are going to die. Every last one of us. And, and, and the thing I want you to hear today is God is not ignorant concerning your life circumstances. God knows not only what's going on right now, he knows what happened yesterday, and he knows what you are going to do tomorrow. Matter of fact, he knows what you're going to do as you get out of church. Now, why are you bothering to tell us this, Pastor? I'm telling you this because I think we have to be serious about this thing we call this Christian journey. We have to be serious about believing in God because I've come to understand that the Bible says that God has appointed a day wherein he will judge the whole world. Right, right. My dad used to say you get rid of anything until you get caught. <laughs> Let me be absolutely clear with you. No matter what you are doing or have done, payday comes after a while. Payday is coming. And I think the church needs to be more vocal in letting people know that the wages of sin is death. That, that, that's the payday for sin, death. But the Bible says that the gift of God is a eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But, but I, I want you to know that God is going to judge the whore. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bible to Matthew 25. I'm going to start at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Okay, so let's go to First book of the New Testament, the Christian scriptures. Just read verse 31. Verse 32 says, All the nations will be gathered with him before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, which is the side of power, and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Now he is judging the nations here. Come, you blessed of my Father, into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, y'all took care of me. You had a Christmas chair, Pastor. And you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger. You looked at me, but you still took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous were answering, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? 
When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I said to you, Inasmuch as you have done it to one of the least of these, my brethren, that's a heavy prescription and a heavy job description when we look at what we should be doing. Tell your neighbors more than Sunday service. More than Sunday service. Surely I say unto you, as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brother, did it to me. Then he would say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For when I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you crossed the street, and you did not take me in. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or strange or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of these, the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. God will judge the nations. And, and, and this judgment, I, I need to help you understand, that this judgment, um, the word judgment means to make a decision. It means to pronounce a sentence or a verdict, but it also means to discriminate or separate according to moral character. And that's what it means in this text that God is going to discriminate and separate according to moral character. Now, this, this separation, this discriminating, will divide people into two classes. One, condemned, and the other, approved. One condemned, the other approved. Now, Understand something that 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 this separating, this discriminating, if you will, from moral character, is a decision that will be made after previous investigation. Amen. And the Bible says that it is given unto us to know that after death comes the judgment. Everyone's going to die, and everyone will be judged. But understand this. At this point, after death and the judgment, your final destination has already been determined before the judgment. The judgment will just bring clearly the manifestation of your final destination. Now, I want to make two points. The first point is everyone will be judged by God. Everyone. Everyone will be judged by God. And, and the second point is that God has given all judgment to Christ. Look at John, fifth chapter. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Now, Pastor, you just said everyone will be judged by God. God will be there. God will be there. But it was Jesus who paid the price. It is he who, because he paid the price, is the only one fit to be a righteous judge. The Bible says it like this. He in all ways was tempted, but he knew no sin. In other words, when we won't, when we don't want to be judged, we look at folks and say, don't judge me. Because we don't feel anybody has a right to judge us because we know that everybody jacked up and messed up. So we're looking for a righteous judge. But guess what? No. Jesus is. 
the righteous judge. You can't go and say, you don't understand, I was, yeah, yeah, I've been here, done that, and I passed. And I'm in you and giving you the ability to pass it to you. So he is a righteous judge. So God will be there, but Jesus is the what? Righteous judge. And what happens is at this point of the judgment, it is a formal declaration of your pre-existing condition. Huh? What do you mean? Okay. I don't know where you are right now in your life circumstance, life situation. But you have until you close your eyes and breathe no more to determine your destiny. I was thinking about it like this. Uh, I was talking to somebody and they were talking about somebody having a destiny. What do you call Destination wedding. Destination wedding. Destination wedding. Destination wedding, yeah. And, and, and they'd be picking and choosing places and getting there and everything. And I was thinking, boy. That may be a destination wedding, but it's also a destination of condemnation or affirmation, too. Because see, when you take your last breath, your final destiny has been determined at that last breath. There is no purgatory. Amen. There is no intermediate ground. There is no bartering or buying your way out of it. That when you take your last breath, it is already been determined. You will be dead. And your body, that the earth, the spirit, the God, the soul of God, and we all will be awaiting judgment. Understand what I'm really saying? Not whether you're going to heaven or hell, because that will already be determined. But it will be made manifest in that God will be very clear, and Christ will be very clear to let you know that, hey, this is it. So, you're dead. Say, I'm dead. Amen. He awakens me, and then he pronounces my ultimate destiny, which was determined the moment I took my last breath. Are you with me? So, I, I just got a question. Are you ready for your destiny right now? Your final destination? Yeah. See, there's some folks think they're going to live forever. I, I shared this with you. When I was much younger, I used to take walks through cemeteries. And I took walks through cemeteries because at first of all, I found them very tranquil, and very peaceful. But back in the older days, they used to have something called epitaphs. And there'd be sayings that were written on the tombstone. Two of the most, two of the, two of the most I guess, memorable ones I found was one where this person had a seat Actually, as part of their, what you call it, said, come, sit a while and rest with me. The other one was this. I feel like I remember. Remember as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am, you too shall be. So prepare for death and follow me. That got my attention. But why I shared it with you is to let you know that there are big graves and small graves. There is no guarantee in life. That's why the song where it said life is filled with swift transitions. So we're coming to a point where everyone will be judged by God and God has given the final judgment to Christ and you have to be ready for your destination based on your choice. Now understand this, but this is the here's the key. The righteous do not come into judgment. Amen. The righteous do not come into judgment. Look at John 5. Let's go to John 5.
and verse 24. It says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into Now understand, this judgment is not one of passing sentence. This judgment we're talking about is made manifest to the final destination. So in that judgment, we're not judged in terms of heaven or hell. That's already been decided. For us. Now, a little later on, we're going to look at our, our, our judgment is an accountability for the works that we've done in the flesh. For those who are not in Christ, their judgment is hell. It's just that simple. So we will not stand in judgment in terms of passing a negative sentence. But we shall all stand and be made manifest before the judgment seat of Christ. That means everybody has to go by his death by his office to find, to find out, to hear it proclaimed. Yeah. Heaven, heaven, hell. Heaven, heaven, hell. Hell, hell, heaven. Heaven, heaven, hell. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe that there are some of us right now who understand we're on shaky ground. Mm -hmm. and, and there may even be some who will figure, well, Whatever happens, happens. I ain't worried about it. That's to do me. Now, I, I, I'm giving you that because I believe that when we who stand before the throne or approach the throne, I believe there's some folk who will make a U-turn before they get to the throne. <laughs> you know how it is when you know you're guilty? <laughs> and you want to be called out? I believe there'd be some folks who won't be about the business of getting out of there because they don't want to hear a righteous God condemn them when they already know that they have condemned themselves. Amen. So, there are some principles by which we shall be judged. Now, not, 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 this is not judgment for heaven or hell. That's already been determined. When we accepted Christ, it was settled, it was fixed. Y'all hear me? But we're still going to be judged. And the first principle, Romans 12, I'm oh, sorry, Romans 2, Romans. We will be judged according to truth. That's the first thing we'll be judged, principle according to truth. I need to hear it. I'm going to give it to you for me. I do my job for me. <laughs> we'll be judged according to what? Truth. Look at verse 1 and 2. Therefore you are inexcusable, old man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you what? For you who judge practice the same things. Now look at verse 2. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. So we'll be judged according to truth. Because sometimes we see stuff and what we see it isn't what it is. 
And what we think we understand isn't necessarily what we understand. We are limited, but God sees and judges according to truth. Then the second principle is will be judged according to deeds. You still there in the second chapter? Look at verse 5. But in accordance with your hardness and your infinite hearts, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Look at verse 6. Who will render to each one according to his deeds. Write down 2 Corinthians 5.10 and 1 Peter 1.17. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, and 1 Peter 1, 17. So we'll be judged according to the principle of truth, according to our deeds, and look now at the 16th verse of the second chapter. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, so we're going to also be, ready for this? Judge according to our motives. Yeah, here's some response. Shaking some things up here. According to our motives. See, sometimes we, we say things that sound good, and we say it for nefarious reasons. So, the principle of truth, the principle of deeds, the principle of motives, and are you still in Romans, the second chapter? Okay. Because the next chapter, verse 11, it says, For there is no partiality with God. What are you saying, preacher? I mean that we'll be judged with no respect of person. No respect. High, low, rich, poor. Educated, uneducated, think we're somebody, think we're nobody. God is not a respecter of persons. <laughs> Y'all still moments? Okay. Let's look at 12 again. It says, For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. That's darkness. And as many as have sinned in the law, that's light, will be judged by the law. So the next one is we're going to be judged according to the measure of light that one has. So if you have Christ, you have light. Because the Bible said where there is no knowledge of sin, there is no sin. It's only when you come into that light. But there's still a judgment. Many of you have talked about last week. And that servant that knew his master's will and would not do it will be beaten with many stripes. That means once you know to do right and you refuse to do it, the consequences are much more. Even in God's house. See, <laughs> Some of us, when we spank, that's right, you can't do it anymore. When you spank a child, if they didn't know, we take a lighter blow. <laughs> you know better than God told you five and six times. <laughs> What they knew, you put them in the left hand shoe. I have told you. <laughs> that resonated <with> something. <laughs> Y'all still know this too? Look at verse 16. 
you already right, visited him, I'm going to the last part now. The day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ will be judged according to the gospel. According to the book. That's God's truth. Now, in six minutes, Christians will stand before Christ. We will stand before Christ. Once again, that judgment is not for hell. But we'll stand before Christ. And the first thing I want you to know when we're going to stand before Christ is that this is not a judgment of condemnation. This is not a judgment of condemnation. Romans 8. <laughs> Verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I thought maybe five or six hours would run around the room. Some of us have been condemned all our life. People talk about us, put us down, say negative things about us. We know we messed up. We're still wondering whether God is still upset with what we did 10 years ago and everything. And, and he's saying right now that that burden ought to be lifted up. We found right. something new. Look, it's not running up. Maybe two or three of y'all should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we still carry stuff. Amen. Wonder yeah. if God, if God says no, he's already told you no. Better than a whole lot of burdens. But some of y'all have some deep, dark stuff that you don't want nobody. Sins have already been judged by Christ. Okay. Ready, ready for this? Verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. 
Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Isaiah 43, 25. Isaiah 43, 25. Isaiah 44, 22. So we we'll stand before Christ and judgment is not condemnation. Our sins have already been judged free. This for us. Write it this way. The judgment of believers. The judgment of believers is reward for works of service. The judgment of believers is reward for works of service. Ephesians 2. It's about the good works that have been fine-tuned and God is trying to continually fine-tune in you. So it is a judgment of, of rewards and works. Now, uh, write this down. 1 Corinthians 3.11. 1 Corinthians 3.11-15. 1 Corinthians 3.11-15. 1 Corinthians 3.11-15. And Luke 6, 5, Luke 6, 5. So you have Ephesians 2, 10, which we read. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15, and Luke 6, 5. Now, four, we must give account of our gifts, our money, our character, and our relationships. We must give account for our gifts, our money, our character, and our relationships. We must give an account of our gifts, our money, our character, and our relationship. Matthew. Okay, I'm going to stop when I can finish with this text. And on Bible study on Tuesday, I'm going to finish this up. So when you're saying, preacher, I'm saying if you don't, if you want to get it. I guess I really don't get it. Somebody said in this spirit. Disappointed to everyone else that we will die. 
nejaké meno. Either you're with him, or you're not sexing. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Hell is a prepared place for unprepared people. You can bust hell wide open by default. What do you mean by default? Because most folks who are out of hell don't intend on going there. Amen. What God is calling us to in this generation, in this time, is to be authentically real with not just him, but ourselves. I shared with you a couple weeks ago that you don't have to sin. It's a choice. God has given us the victory over sin through his son, Christ Jesus. If you go back to Romans 8, verse 1, now therefore there is no condemnation to those who walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. Now, that doesn't mean when you hear the word flesh that you're out trying to kick it with whomever and whenever, however. What it means is that we have certain appetites that we need that we have to have to please ourselves that put us not in the realm of the spirit, but in the realm of the world. We may preach, I'll make it just as simple. I make excellent of dollars. And I think one tenth of X belongs to God. And because I think one tenth of X belongs to God, then I think the 90% of X is mine to do what I choose to do. And so I set up for myself a very prudent, very wise, very intelligent, and I set up for myself my own little kingdom. I can afford it, I'm paying my. And I'm not in. So that's my idea is <laughs> to do what I <laughs> I heard my pastor this morning make a statement, and he has two brothers and a sister, and and and, and because I know them personally, there are times when they aren't the most wise, prudent utilization of the resources. But because God has blessed Pastor John K. Jenkins, he takes care of them to the nth degree of dollars and cents. Now see, I, I say that because he says, when you're successful, you have a accountability and responsibility to others. What? Am I not brother or sister? Keep me yes. When God has blessed you, that you can have other brothers above and beyond and over, but they, are, they ain't working like me. They didn't sacrifice like me. This is mine, but I work hard for my money. I just can't give to anybody and everybody. If you style and smile and profile, and turn the deaf ear and the blind eye. Amen. I think I said enough. Please stand with me. My question to you right now is where are you headed? What is your ultimate destination? 